wiring, wiring test, right? Everybody okay? Everybody else okay so far? Yes or no? Are we okay? Yeah, okay. Anthony, you okay? So we, we opened up the TO portal. We selected what? Create a new project. Then up here under the project name, we're going to call it wiring test. One word. Just use an uppercase T. Are we okay so far? Okay. Now what we're going to do is under path. So this, this shows where we're going to store it at. I'm going to go over here on the right hand side and click on this little scroll thing. Are we okay? And it, a little pop up, a pop up. Everybody okay? Uh, then it automatically puts you in a folder on this computer. and We don't want to do that, right? You understand? So what I did is I went up to the top where it says Rich Raymond. You'll see that? And then hit on the little button, a little arrow on the left, and it's going to close that up. Everybody okay? Okay, then we're going to go to My Computer. And then in this list, in this long list, you should have your drive. We mapped those drives the other day, right? AUT, whatever you are. Everybody see it? Okay. And then we'll just come up here and double click on that. So I'm going to, I'm going to come up here and put it in our, anybody need help there? Yeah, you'll be 212B. Just double click on that. Yeah, computer. Then you should have one drive out there. Uh, I'm sorry, you should have C drive. You're not going to put it in C. You're going to put it in your ILT folder, right? Everybody okay? So go ahead and click on that. So if I was doing it up here, I don't have that folder. Uh, like I'm going to put mine in my PLC3 class. So I'll come up here and I've got one called program. I'm going to click on that. You don't have to double click on it. I'm sorry. Just put OK. But what you should notice as soon as you say OK, path to the same. Oh, it doesn't? But it should be Z. They should be okay. That's that's y'all's. That's what we mapped that drive, right? With Z. So just click on that, and then click on OK, and your path should change to Z. And now what's going to happen is when we save this program, it's going to save it on on my my server instead of saving it on your computer. So at the end of the term, when I delete the programs, I don't have to open up all these computers. I can just go to the server and delete everything there, right? Okay, so then we're going to say what? Create. Mine says under author, it says ILT 212C. Is that okay? Yes, fine. Now you could change that if you want to, but you're working as a team anyway, so uh, yeah, you could change the author. What it does is it gives you it, it gives you the name of whoever logged in. So my login username is R R E Y N N. Your login username was A U T two twelve something, right? And we'll look at changing the IP address too. And that way, if we get time toward the end of the term, we can make these guys communicate with each other. And hopefully we have time to do an HMI panel too. But uh, I know there's no classes next week, right? For our classes. If you're in another class, uh, at, both mine, yeah. So uh, mine was created. What's the next thing we need to do? Yeah, configure the device. And this is what's so cool about this this application is it's going to figure out this PLC, uh, the new analog card that we put in there. It'll figure out your uh, your I/O module you put on there.
Oh, it's funny, you're dead. Okay. Okay, y'all can't do this. Okay, good. That's all I want. So, A, C, and And then password is welcome up to SWL. That's why you're live. Okay. 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 Up. So uh, the first thing we did was run the power wires, right? Uh, so we ran a what? We ran a blue and a, a orange. Which one's plus? Okay. Uh, orange is plus and blue is minus. Now where are you going to run that to? In. The arrow pointing in, right? Now your inputs and your outputs are not going to work right now because we're getting we're getting that power off off plugs. So what we're going to do, uh, I'm using red and black. So what we're going to do is bring our power that we that we wired, the two wires that we brought out, the orange and the blue, right? And then we're going to hook on the input power of the PLC. Now mine's up, upside mine's upside down from yours. So we're looking at the arrow pointing in, right? Not the one pointing out, the one that's pointing in. Uh, then you're going to hook up the orange to L plus. And then your blue, you're going to hook it up to what? M. On the arrow pointing in, not on the arrow pointing out. That would cause all kinds of problems. So we need to hook up our Ethernet cable, right? The orange one that you got. Oh, that, I mean, I'm sorry, green one. Uh, you need to hook it up to your... Uh, this is called an RJ45. Most computers, by the way, when you first when you first turn them on, they run through a little what we call a power on self test, a little post. So when we turn it on, we should see uh, the lights come up here and play. So that's what it's doing. It's running a post right now, right? And eventually, hopefully, everything will come up and uh, turn green. I'm sorry, it'll go to mine's right now is in stop. Yours will come up. Yours should come up to stop too because I think we reset the CPUs, right? 
if you had a program in there, it would come up and start that program automatically. If you had or if you had one in the memory of the of the huh? Are we okay so far? So now we should be able to detect our CPU because we got it plugged in. Everybody okay? You okay, Christy? Yes, sir. Okay. So we'll go to what? We'll go to add new device. We'll go to our controller. We'll come over here to the somatic, uh, somatic uh, S7 1200. And then what we'll do is hit on CPU, right? And then we'll go all the way down to what? Unspecified CPU. Everybody okay? Uh, then we'll go up here and we'll click on that. It's going to bring up a weird number. And then we'll double click on that number. And then it'll come up and start looking for the stuff, right? And what's so neat is not only is it going to configure it for the CPU, it's also going to configure it for the I.O. module that we added. And then plus the little analog card that's in there. It's going to go out there and find every one of them. If we did it manually, then we would have to go out and, and find signal cards. So uh, these cards that you can buy and put in the center right here, uh, Siemens calls these signal cards. And of course, we bought an analog output signal card, right? Does that make sense? They call these signal, signal cards. And of course, uh, this is where we can add different types of inputs and outputs on uh, the uh, left hand side, right? And then the right hand side is where we could buy different types of communication modules like device net or, or uh, Profibus or di different types of modules. I think you can actually buy a Wi Fi card too for the thing, I'm not sure. Uh, but what's so neat, it goes back and finds all this stuff for us. So what we would have to do is we'd have to choose the list, we would have to get the, we'd have to get the model number and everything off the side that we would have to record before we put our I.O. module on there, right? And then we'd have to get find the number on our I.O. module. We'd have to find the number on the analog card and uh, anything else that we look on here. Uh, so this is a really neat feature that really, really helps uh, helps us configure the PLC. Now, whether whether uh, RS Logics 5000 does that for us, uh, I have no idea. So I came up here. Everybody's here, right? And then we're going to do what? We're going to hit on detect, and then it's going to go out there and search. And this is this takes a little while because it's got to do what? Then we'll go start search. And this takes a little while because uh, we're waiting on what? Right now, this detect is grayed out. We're waiting on it to allow us. So what it's done is found uh, the I.O. address, it's got the MAC address, it's found the MAC address, right? But we don't have an IP address yet. So that's the actual MAC address, and everybody's MAC address should be different because that's that's hardware specific, right? Uh, mine's, mine's uh, I, I've got the option to select that now, so I'm going to come up here and uh, detect it. Now it's going to go out. It's assigning an IP address. But we're going to have to go back and change that, right? And we'll go ahead and do that now. Assign an IP. We're going to select what? Yes. I'm going to add an IP for my computer. That IP should be okay, right? Uh, the only problem we would have with that, with that IP is if we went over there and tried to hook multiple computers up to the thing at the same time, uh, then we would have a problem. And then it should pop up here in a second. So it found everything, right? It automatically put our I.O. card on there. It automatically put our analog output card on there. And uh, are we okay? Are we okay? I'm trying to remember how we can sign the IP. I think we can sign it here. So 
So what we're going to do now is uh, uh, y'all watch, watch what I'm doing. Are y'all watching? Okay. So we're going to come up here. Yeah, we have to. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, mine was already configured. You have to select. You have to select the interface, right? Uh, whichever, I, whichever uh, network card you have. Well, mine's a different computer. Yeah, mine is a Lenovo computer, and that was its network card, right? But yours should have selected it because we should have took care of that last last time. So what I'm gonna do? Uh, I don't know if y'all saw what I did. Uh, I'm gonna come over here. And just click on the little Ethernet connector over here on the left. You'll see that. See it? Everybody okay? Okay, then I'm gonna go down to properties. Now mine I have it reduced down, so I'm gonna have to bring mine up. And then we're gonna come down here under uh under general. Okay, y'all see where I'm at, yes or no? And then Ethernet address, mine came up already selected. And then this is where we can actually assign the Ethernet address to our network card. No, we're not doing wireless. We're connected to a cable. So what's what what's y'all what y'all's is real tech? And that should have came up by default because that computer's been hooked up before. So all these, all these computers should have came up with uh, the default network card and all that kind of stuff. You okay, Christine? I think so. I'm just following you. I have that. That's okay. Now what we can do is once we're here, you're watching. So how do we get here? Clicked on the little Ethernet plug. Uh, went on went on properties. Then if it didn't pop up automatically, we went over here and double clicked on Ethernet address. And then we can come over to this little scroll button. And everybody in here has 192.168.0.1. Well, guess what? Oh, we're going to have to change it right here. Now, what we're already using uh, is I'm already using my my Mine, and I'm not going to change mine because mine's already programmed, right? So mine's already set up for 0.1. The HMI panel was set up for 0.2. Okay. So I'm leaving off all 168, right? Okay. So what we're going to do is whoever's on B will use what? 0.3, right? Whoever's on C will use 0.4. And who's ever on B? All you gotta do, guys, is go down there and do what? Just change the one. Yeah, just come down here and change this. So I'm gonna come up here. Uh, since y'all are using, uh, since y'all are using uh, three, four, and five, uh, I'm gonna set mine to six. Well, we can make sure it's gonna do it. No, it's probably not gonna automatically save it, but we're fixing to take care of it. Yeah, we'll make sure it changes it. It's not very hard to do. So I've got mine set to six. Okay. So what I'm going to do is over here in uh, in my project tree, right over here which says uh, device configuration. Sorry. Now something's still going on. I think it did it. Because it's not giving me the ability to. Okay. So what I did over here on my device co uh, configuration is another thing that we need to do 
is we need to come over here and, and uh, click on the the actual PLC itself, right? I'm going to come here and double click on that. Let's see what it does. Yeah, it should allow us when you double click it. Eventually it'll come up to the text box. And what this does, it should come up to a text box. So what can we do now? We can change the name of the PLC. So what we find out, we have two ways we can address on a network. We can address by name. Or we can address by number, right? You understand that? Of course, which way do we prefer? Name, right? So uh, mine is called P yours. Uh, mine over there is called mine is called PLC one. So what are we going to do here? Name the testing process to him. What's that? Name on board. PLC two. We could call it PLC two, or we could call it. We could give it the name of the testing. We could actually give it the name testing. We could give it the name processing. We could give it the name handling. So what do y'all want to do? Yes. Okay, so let's give it the name of the module that's going to run. Okay. Are we okay? So let's give the PLC the name of the one. So I can come back here and call this. What's the next? Uh, buffer. Might be buffering. So notice when after you hit it. Went up here on the top now and you gave it the what? Gave it the name of whatever you assigned. So what we did is we changed the IP address. Uh -oh. Let's we'll see if everything comes up and it looks like we lost our network connection when we changed the name. Wait. We came over here where it said uh, PLC. So over here on the left in the project tree, we had a PLC dash one. Is it dash one or underscore one? I double clicked on that. And then it, once I double clicked on that, it came up, it changed to a text box and it gave me the ability to do what? Change the name. Right. And we're seeing how this is going to work. It's taking a little while. Are y'all still working? Or not? Oh, no. I hope you're doing well. It's nothing that we can't fix, right? Because we're still in the software portion of the uh, What's the name of the next step? I don't know. Mine, mine, mine's working on something. Else, right? So we got the switches hooked up so we can test our inputs with the switches, right? So all our programming, and don't worry about the tags. We'll look, we'll look at tags later on. So it'll, it'll automatically implement the tags for you. So notice what my first network is. I'm saying input 0.0, .0 and I'm going to send that to input Q0.0. .0. And then my next one will be what? Input 0 0.1, and where am I going to send that to? Q. Q1.1, right? And we'll just go right down the line. And then we'll download it, and then we should be able to flip our switch, and that and the and the associated output should turn on. That makes sense. Everybody okay? <laughs> Everybody know what we're doing. Once y'all get that far.
So it's a very, very, very fundamental, very simple program where we can check to see if we may, it'll, it'll mean our outputs are wired up right. It doesn't necessarily mean our inputs are wired up right because what we're using is we're using the switches, right? We're not actually using the true, the true inputs. But that'll be something minor that we'll be able to figure out later on. What's that name that's under the How we're going to do is just say, huh? Now, I didn't remember, you want to go Q0 through 7, and then you'll, have, you'll start having to use input 1.0 and Q1.7, right? If you try to use Q1.8, it's going to come up and turn red and say that's a bad syntax error. Because remember, this guy goes in bytes, where Alan Bradley goes in words, right? Everybody okay? Yeah, we're, all we're going to do is is write up one line, and we're going to let a, one of our inputs turn on the associated outputs, right? So once we write it, I should just flip the switch one at a time, and the light should just do what? Just sequence down through there, and that way we can tell if we got one of our outputs wired up backwards, or one of our switches. Are we okay? Everybody okay? And this lab, this lab is going to be called, I don't remember, what's the lab number? I can look it up. Wire testing, right? Huh? Okay, so this is four. And we're not setting up a tag table. We're going to use just let y'all use the default tags because we're not going to use this program much anyway, right? And, and what's nice about storing it off on another computer is now if you've got access to that folder, you can use any computer that's got the TS software installed on it. You just map, you just, so map to the, yeah, but what you'd have to do is you'd have to use that browse option down there and, and then find it. But, uh, so I do stuff from my home. I do stuff all over the place, right? I can use different computers, uh, because. And like I said, it'll give me the ability to, uh, go back at the end of the term and, not erase them, what I can do is move them, right? 